Hello, this is Deanna from Vintage Touch, and I'm really anxious to share with you another antique haul from the things that I found in my treasure hunt over, over the weekend. This uh, group of things that you will see came to just under $120. And I'm really happy with the selection of things that I found. The first thing I'm going to start right here is turn it around here so you can see it's a it's a 19th century decorated plank bottom chair. Um, I think this is called a straight Windsor back. But as you can see, it has wonderful crazing on the seat and the back. Now, this is something that uh, oftentimes people try to duplicate on new furniture, but this one has got its crazing as a result of age. And, of course, I love the worn look. It's what partly what draws me to antiques with all the character. Now, I will probably do something to uh, seal this seat so that it doesn't flake off. But it is um, it's quite charming, and you can see the decoration there on the back. And so, it's a smaller size chair, too, let me say, because people in the 19th century were, were characteristically smaller than uh, People are today shorter and tinier for the most part, and so a lot of the chairs are smaller. So that was one of the things that I got. And also, I like silver plate, and I like the worn look of silver plate. This one has a lovely, this is a nice little tray that can be used for many things. It can be used on your dresser just to put your jewelry and stuff, and it has a highly embossed um, um, rim around the outside that's raised up as you can see and as you and it needs a little bit of work and sprucing up but it is really a nice piece. Here's a large gathering basket. This is a splint basket from the 19th century with a beautiful handle here. If I can get it here so you can see the handle. It's in pretty good condition. And like I said, it's a larger size, so it's, um, I was really happy to find that. I sell a lot of ironstone, and here's a great little smaller. Um, I, it could be used for gravy or, I guess, a small casserole, but it's a really a small piece. So it's probably more for gravy, but it uh, has the ladle with it, which is often missing, and it's in really good condition. It's a double handle piece there. And I got uh, this gray granite colander. It has the pedestal base, double handle. It does have the characteristic dings and things that you would see with on granite ware, used granite ware like that. But it is still a nice, uh, attractive primitive. And here's one that is a tin colander. It also has double handles. And these are very popular. People do a lot with them, and they make great centerpieces for your table and uh, to, to store a lot of things in and make displays with a lot of things. I got this um, beautiful linen runner, and, and it has the uh, cut work edge. I forget what that's called exactly, the way that, uh, that that's done with the thread. But that runs all around the border of it. And that's a really pretty piece that, that was in great condition. Now this is a like a deep dish pie pan, but it is a primitive pottery piece that I think is like a light colored yellow ware. And it has a nice early mark on the bottom. And that was also in great condition, except, you know, you see the typical ware, which is part of the charm. Another wood spatula. I always pick up these early spoons and spatulas. Here's a bill spike with the cast iron base. People use these. I use these on my desk to put credit card receipts in. They're very popular as well. Here's another hand mirror. That's uh, the black wood. It's got the uh, beveled mirror there. 
Here's an interesting piece. Now we've done a little research on this, and I, it is a, it's a milk glass flask for tooth powder. Some said it went dated back to the Civil War era, but I believe it's more closely associated with late 19th century. Here is a couple of small crocs. I sell a lot of the smaller size crocs. And I picked up a couple of these uh, artificial eggs because when I do egg displays and stuff or anything that requires an egg, I like to stick an egg in it. So that was that's always good to get. Here's the sweetest little thing, and I don't know if this came with a, with a toy doll kind of set or not. I hope I can get this back open. But it is called Cutie, and it's like a little it's a little razor, like a safety razor, in a little case, and the case says cutie, and it is plastic, but it's an early piece, and just adorable, couldn't pass that up. And here's an early book from the 19th century, and this one is Classics for Children, and it's Tales from Shakespeare, and, an, and a small book here. Now, I like these little um, 19th century fat books like this and this one's got hymns in it and and that's late 19th century. Here's a little belt bag I guess that's what I call it. It's a Victorian with the embossed frame and and beaded on the front. I think, most, I think all the beads are there and the inside and the back is uh, is leather as you can see. And this piece is really unusual. It's I guess it's a huge cup, but it's uh, it's a heavy-duty steel uh, cup container, very large. Um, don't know really what that would have been used for, but interesting, very interesting. So I picked that up. Here's another uh, green. I mean, not green. Excuse me. I'm really colorblind today. I read. Um, hand cultivator for the garden. These, um, these vintage uh, garden tools are real popular. People decorate with them and, and uh, I decorate my garden room with them as well. So different collars are nice to get. And I also found man's old derby here. Bowler derby. It's, uh, it's an early piece. And I love to get these old hats. They just, uh, they do really well for me. And here, 1930s travel case, suitcase. And it, the interior is really quite clean. And it's got that nice little, uh, it's like a gingham almost uh, finish, paper finish on the inside. And it still latches. And it's got a like the leather handle there and it needs cleaned up a little bit but it's a it's a smaller size travel case so that would make a really good piece to tuck in somewhere so that's the extent of what I got this weekend and before I close let me remind you that all of these things will be processed and cleaned up and made presentable for sale and when they become ready for sale. I do put the links in the description of the video and uh, so you can look for them there with the prices and I uh, either put them in my shop in Antique Crossroads, Hagerstown, Maryland. It, um, I have a double space booth there or I put them in my online store. But in either way there would be a link that will show you about the piece. Also let me invite you to subscribe to my channel if you would have a mind to. It's a big encouragement to have, a, have you subscribe and I would just love to have you. And also let me um, encourage you to leave any question or comment or contact me if I can be of assistance to you about any of the pieces or things that I sell. In the description of my video, you will also find links to my web page and my online store. So, I'm in conclusion, let me thank you for taking this time to watch this video. And I, I hope that you've enjoyed it and that you will um, come by the shop at, 
Antique Crossroads in Hagerstown, Maryland, and visit. Thank you for watching.